been kind of a while. I know that's hard for millennials and stuff to hear. The last movie came out at least 10 years ago at this point. Is this real life? Hey there YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. My humble abode here in this little corner of the internet is I, Nadia the Nerdy, and I am so excited to get into today's topic. <laughs> We are going to be talking about something that's a little bit of a hot topic these days since its recent announcement, and that is who even asked for this Harry Potter remake? And I'm here to tell you that the answer is I did. <laughs> But yeah, I've actually been asking about this for years. So maybe I didn't ask out loud, but I definitely was asking deep down in my nerd heart, just wishing that they could have captured the books better than how they did in the movies that we have. Now, those of you who know me know that I am something of a pothead. Ooh. Um, chill. I mean, Potterhead. Obviously. I, like many others who grew up in the mid to early 2000s, were occasionally caught telling you our Hogwarts houses. I was one of those people who went around talking about how I was a Ravenclaw. Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassed. Even though now I'm kind of like leaning towards Hufflepuff? I don't know, can your Hogwarts house change halfway through your life? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But not only did I walk around saying what my Hogwarts house was, but I was also that guy who was walking around saying, well, you know, in the books, Ravenclaw's sigil actually wasn't a raven, it was an eagle. And that was just one of the many changes from the books. Okay. No, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Yeah, I was that guy. And I'm not saying this to sound pretentious, even though, yes, at the time, I was definitely just a tad bit on my nerd works. But I say this to genuinely illustrate the fact that there are a lot of us out there who actually never liked the movies. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? It is what it is. There's quite a few people out there who are really big Harry Potter fans that just don't like the movies at all. And there's no shade there, like no shade to anyone who does like the movies and no shade to obviously the actors or the people who made the movies. But to me, it wasn't really, it didn't really fulfill my Harry Potter dreams. It was supposed to give, but it did not give what needed to be gave to the highest of giving. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good stuff that came out of those movies. Some of those actors were totally <laughs> iconic and we will forever know them as those characters because we literally Aww. grew up with them. But they left out certain details in the movies that just made them not really make as much sense. And yes, I know there are <laughs> plot holes still in the books. I'm not gonna go into every nitty gritty detail of what was specifically specifically left out in this video because that would be a lot. Although if you want me to make that video in the future, I would be more than willing. But I am going to give you some of the reasons that I might be kind of down with this remake. And again, again, I am not saying that the movies don't have their place or that they weren't a cultural phenomenon and they weren't totally iconic in their own rights. But what I am saying is that I do feel like there is a chance. And a chance. That the adaption could be good. And dare I say, better. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Of course, there's also a chance that they would totally suck. And in which case, who cares anyway, right? It sucks. We don't have to watch it. If it's good, like. Only, it's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? 
Another side note is that I also do get that when you are making a book to movie adaption, there are changes that need to be made. You can't keep everything that's in the books and some things need to be changed for cinematic purposes because it's a different medium of consumption. I really get that. I really do. I'm just saying that a lot of the changes in those specific movies I think could have been done better and maybe a show is a better medium for this particular series. So anyway, here are my reasons in no particular order. Like they have an order, but like I wrote them out in an order obviously, but I'm just saying they're not ranked in terms of which is most important. Reason number one. I think this is a chance for them to better capture the magic of the books. Maybe it's just my personal opinion, but I always felt like the movies really fell flat in terms of the magicalness. I might get hate for saying this, but in a lot of ways, the movies made the world kind of bland. Don't be Don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? Don't hate me. I, I just, there's so much they could have done with this world to make it really feel super incredibly magical and amazing and kind of the way the books make you feel, but they just didn't. A lot of the quirkiness was kind of stripped and to be honest, there was a continuity problem in terms of the vibe of the movies. And I think this is because there were several different directors that took on these movies throughout the course of of the eight movies and each director kind of went in a totally different direction in terms of vibe which fair in a sense like the books have different vibes but it's still the same story so I feel like they didn't quite master how to keep the same feel while also growing and maturing the story like the books do. Reason number two not only could the new show potentially better capture the vibes of the book but also because it's a show format it's no longer constrained by the length that a feature film has to be so there's a lot more potential for them to include some of the storylines that were cut due to it needing to be a certain length of time so adding those things can really change the whole story For example in the second book one of my all-time favorite chapters is the death day party where Harry Ron and Hermione all go to nearly headless Nick's death day party Party, it's Halloween they go to that instead of going to the school feast and the whole time they're thinking okay we just got to do this we told him we'd go we're gonna go to the feast after this party a lot of people don't think about that scene a lot but it's actually not only is it super amazing and just weird it actually played a huge role in the book because it explains why Harry Ron and Hermione are in the corridor before the rest of the students after the feast it's because they were leaving Leaving nearly headless Nick's party and then Harry hears the voices in the walls blah 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 you guys know the story but it's not just like some random coincidence in the sense that oh they were just out in the hall like before everybody no they were actually there's like a reason why they were there you know and I feel like that would look really cool cinematically the whole death day party imagine especially with the technology that we have now versus when these movies were being made like when the second one was made it could be good and that's just one one small example of the things that were cut that actually played like pretty important roles within the story. Another example uh, before I move on of storylines that were completely cut for like no reason that would have actually helped the movies make sense is how they completely left out the ghoul in the attic from the seventh book. Um, Okay, in case you didn't read the books, basically that's Ron's excuse for why he's not at Hogwarts. So basically they have a ghoul in the attic and they put the ghoul in pajamas and then because it looks so terrible, they say that it's Ron and he has, uh, what, what is it again? Um, Spattergroyd? Yeah, Spattergroyd. <laughs> and so that's why he couldn't go back to school. That way you know, when he disappeared, they wouldn't immediately go after his family. Like it wouldn't immediately be suspicious and it wouldn't bring like all the attention to his family, which like yeah. seems pretty important. But yeah, why include that, right? Why? I mean, come on though. They included something for Hermione. She wipes her family's memory 
and they include nothing for Ron. The family that everybody knows Harry spends time with. Harry never even met Hermione's family. But she gets like a little scene saying, oh, this is how Hermione like deals with leaving her family. Then nothing for Ron. Okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Motherfucker. And don't even get me started on the things that they added into the story that never happened in the book, like the burning of the burrow. Why? 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 What was that, honestly? I never understood that scene. I guess just for shock value, tug at your heartstrings or whatever, but I personally thought that was dumb. Back to the topic at hand, here is reason number three. Not only did they not include certain storylines, but they also didn't include certain characters. Like, essential characters, though. Like, Peeves! <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that Peeves isn't in the movies. It's like basically two different worlds. That's crazy. Peeves the poltergeist. He is like half of Hogwarts, basically. Whose decision was it to not include Peeves, though? He's non-essential? That's weird. Who gave them the right to cut Peeves from the storyline? I guess it was JK Rowling. See, this is only one of the reasons why we can't trust her. Even though she wrote the books, she cannot be trusted. <laughs> but they also cut other essential characters like Winky. Dude, her whole storyline is honestly part of the entire backbone of book four. But for some reason, they didn't feel the need to include her in the story. Her storyline makes the whole story of book four makes sense with Barty Crouch and Barty Crouch Jr. Ah, okay, no winky, that's fine. <laughs> Interesting choice. <laughs> And then on top of that, another character that they basically completely cut out was Charlie, one of the Weasleys. I think he's mentioned in the first and second movies maybe a few times. I know that Ron does go to visit him with his family and maybe it's because they already thought they had too many Weasleys because there's a lot of kids, but they just cut him all together out, which is kind of lame because he actually does play a good role in the storyline. Okay, he's not the most important Weasley, but in the first book you'd never know it if you'd only seen the movies but he is actually the one who helps Harry get Norbert out of Hogwarts so that they can make sure Hogwarts uh, Hogwarts you you could you do you you want Hagrid doesn't get in trouble for having the dragon but you would never know if you've only seen the movies. And then another character that they cut out that I'm like a little bit salty about, which may be a little less essential, but personally I loved the scenes with him, was Frenzy, the centaur who takes over Professor Trelawney's place in the fifth book when she gets fired. Yes, yeah, slightly less essential, but I really feel like the astronomy classroom that he has would be so stunning in a cinematic space. So like, come on HP make it happen let's bring back frenzy okay <laughs> moving on to reason number four this is one of my biggest issues with the movies and it's particularly what I really hope that they can rectify with this show they took some of the most interesting badass characters and made them I'm just gonna say it the f worst why are you the way that you are and I feel like I don't even need to name names here, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> First off, we need to talk about Ron. And I'm not saying he's the first in the movies. I'm just saying he's not the same character. They really did him dirty in those movies. All of his best lines were given to Hermione. All of the things that showed just how loyal he was and how good of a friend he actually was to Harry were taken away from him and given to Hermione. Who, let's be real, she doesn't need any help being a badass character. Like, she's already super cool.
cool in the books. They didn't need to make her have all of Ron's best traits as well. But they really took away so much of his personality and replaced him with this kind of dumb guy who eats a lot and is mostly there for comedic relief. Instead of the badass ride or die bestie that he really was. Because he really went the distance for his friends and he was actually somewhat smart. <laughs> Not the smartest, but somewhat smart. Don't get me wrong, Rupert Grant did an incredible job playing Ron. Like, he truly was iconic. But I just feel like the writers kind of did him dirty. And next up, we have Ginny Weasley. She's the one who I feel like I don't need to name names for, because, like, everybody knows it. If you read the books, you know that Ginny is not the same at all. Book Ginny is super fucking cool. She's got personality. She's got spunk. She's independent. She's She's talented, she's smart, she can keep up with the twins' wit, for goodness sakes. Like, come on. And then there is movie Ginny, who's just like, um, hey, your shoe's untied. And then, like, she awkwardly ties Harry's shoe. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I don't accept this. Her whole story arc in the book was basically her being so shy and way too obsessed with Harry and then having to overcome that and basically being like this. I'm gonna be my most badass self. She is an icon in the books and she deserved so much better. I really hope that they can do this for her in the remake. And again, nothing against the actress who played her. The writers did her so dirty. They're just like... It's self-explanatory. But not me. <laughs> She's the most awkward, poorly written character in the whole movie's franchise. I'm sorry. Harry. Hi there. Then there is Dumbledore. Let me start off by saying that the original actor that they cast in the first and second movies was phenomenal. Basically, he was Dumbledore. And it was honestly tragic that he passed during the making of these movies. Could you imagine if he played Dumbledore the whole way through? That would have been amazing. But the guy who replaced him, it's like the director said, okay, uh, you know that how that other guy played Dumbledore? Well, we want you to do the exact opposite. The way he played the character made literally no sense whatsoever. Straight up. It was not only the complete opposite of the guy before him, but it's not even remotely close to his character in the books. Did you put your name into the Goblet of Fire, Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. Harry! I protest! Harry, you put your name in the cover of the fire. And this is an example of the continuity that I was talking about within the movies earlier. Like, how the movies each felt completely different. I think the shift from the two Dumbledores is a good example of that. Obviously, you have to work with what you got if somebody passes, but they completely changed the character, man. I mean, say what you will about Dumbledore as a character, whether you love him or you hate him. I think we can all agree that the movie and book portrayals are are vastly different and to be honest I feel like that actually changes the entire story because he is such a huge part so you can't just completely change who he is and how he reacts to things and keep the same vibe for the story that's my opinion but I'm sure we can all picture some of the instances where Dumbledore's reactions were completely different than in the book Dumbledore asked come. And last but not least, reason number five. This one actually might be less important than the others, but it's more of a personal opinion, which obviously this whole video is a personal opinion. This is more of an aesthetic opinion. I feel like this show could be a really good chance for HBO to make Hogwarts look and feel as awesome as they made it look and feel in Hogwarts Legacy. Because dang, that game went up above and beyond, bro. Have you played it? Cause they were not messing around. 
around. The design of that school, enough said. It was, it's gorgeous. It's totally gorgeous. Let's be honest, the movie version of the school was kind of boring. There I said it. It was unimagined. It wasn't actually that magical and hate me if you want, but I'm just saying that it was not that incredible. If you played the game and you compare the two, it's like Hogwarts in the movies is like super dark and kind of damp. It's all just kind of the same. Yeah, there's like cool pictures and there's areas that are kind of more interesting than others. But then you play this game and it's just like, whoa, the details are insane. It's gorgeous. There's magic everywhere. Everything is colorful and incredible. And the architecture is so interesting and it's so much bigger than the movie makes it out to seem. The game is just brimming with magic and creativity. Can you imagine if HBO did something like that? I mean, with HBO's budget or Max's budget or whatever, I mean, they got the money. They can make it look dope. Not only that, but it's also also a chance for them to capture some of the more darker themes from the later books. Picture it. The Hogwarts from the game with a darker overtone from the books. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I'm into that. That could be cool. I think I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll watch the first episode, you know? <laughs> Aesthetically, I think that HBO could actually really do something cool, especially since half the work was done for them via the Hogwarts Legacy. So yeah, those are my thoughts on why I actually did ask for a remake and why I think that this one could be cool. I see potential, okay? And if it's not good, <laughs> Again, no harm, no foul. Who is it really hurting here? We still have the movies. They're still iconic in their own ways. We still have the books, obviously. Um, so... I'm gonna give it a shot. And everyone's saying, like, it's too soon to make a Harry Potter remake. I'm sorry, but, like... What's the timeline here? I don't know. I think it's fine. It's been kind of a while. I know that's hard for millennials and stuff to hear. Is this real life? But the last movie came out at least 10 years ago at this point. Kind of older now. And didn't the first one come out in like 2001? Huh? So, I don't know. I'm not gonna totally write off this show just yet, and I'm not completely abandoning the thought that it also might be trash. We did see what HBO did with the Song of Ice and Fire, so that is a cautionary tale for sure. Although, I kind of blame the showrunners for that one and not necessarily HBO. But if we're being honest, I have been dying for a reason to talk about why the original movies were actually trash since like movie three. I'm just thankful for this show for stirring up a little controversy. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think about this show. Are you looking forward to it or do you think it's gonna be lame? Do you think it's too soon? I know that some people on this topic have very strong opinions, obviously, so let's just be nice and cordial down there. But I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on the matter. And let me know what other Harry Potter topics you would like to see me talk about. If you made it to the end of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye, have a great time.